and welcome to What the Math! And today's topic is chapter 1 prime numbers and composite numbers and we're actually going to be finishing up the chapter and the prime numbers are pretty awesome so let's talk about them. Alright let's start with the short definition so what are prime numbers and what are composite numbers. Prime numbers are basically the numbers that can only be divided by number one or themselves. In other words they only have two factors one and itself so this is numbers like for example 5 7 11 so let's look at 11 11 can only be divided by 1 and by 11 nothing else and that's a prime number and composite numbers are basically everything else so these are numbers like 2 4 6 uh, 12 and so on so numbers that can be divided by many factors now all of these are even but they can also be uh, odd so for example number 27 can be divided by 9, it can be divided by 3, so that's not a prime number, it's a composite number. And then we also have a very lonely, very sad number 1, which is a number by itself, it's not a prime or a composite number, it's indeed the loneliest number. And why is this all important? Well, you might think, well listen, this is math, another theory, another theoretical concept that I will never apply to my life, but the thing is, prime numbers, today at least, are super important. And I'll actually t give you one example that will blow your minds. Now, historically, prime numbers were actually discovered a long time ago by ancient Greeks, something like 2,500 years ago. But then, between that and today, for almost 2,500 years, for over 2,000 years, nobody really cared about prime numbers, except actually for this one guy. This one guy in the 1700s, Pierre de Fermat or uh, is it, is he's known in English Fermat and he was actually really into prime numbers he discovered several really cool ways of finding them and he actually wrote some theorems related to um, prime numbers and he even uh, made a really awesome definition but uh, except for him nobody really cared about prime numbers but in the modern computer age we actually discovered that these numbers are pretty epic and for one it's almost impossible really really difficult to find them they're very difficult to predict in other words, finding them is a huge, huge problem uh, because there's really no actual formula, it's just a definition and uh, we don't really have any uh, computing power to find numbers that are really, really, really big. So for example, the last number that was found, the longest number to date, um, it took two years to find on the most powerful computer and it's not even that long. Okay, it is pretty long, but it's not that long. Oh, and this number is 2 to the power of 43,112,609 minus 1. If I were to rewrite this number on a piece of paper, it would actually take me about 10,000 pages to write it on. And that's about a stack of books that's about this big. So this might all sound really cool and awesome, but why is it important? Well, here's why. It's super important in modern computer security. Specifically, imagine you go on an online auction like eBay or Gmarket or whatever and you decide to purchase something. Now, if you decide to purchase something with your credit card and you don't use a prime number key, your credit card number will be stolen and you lose all your money. And so a lot of modern security actually depends on the prime numbers. And the way it works is like this. Imagine we take two really, really, really high, impossibly, impossible to find prime numbers, P1 and P2, and then we decide to multiply them. The result of two prime numbers is no longer a prime number, it's actually going to be a composite number that has many, many, many factors. And we'll call this number C, which is going to be our public security key. This public security key can be used to encode or encrypt your credit card number and then purchase a product. Oh, and knowing this public key is not really a problem because what happens afterwards, once your credit card is used, this public key is disposed of and essentially your credit card is secure because nobody really knows these private keys, but knowing the public key is not enough to hack your credit card to find out its number. Because here's, let's just do an example. Let's try two different prime numbers and see how many factors we get. So let's discover if this is actually a secure method. So let's just take two random prime numbers. I'm going to take 111 and then I'm going to take 113 and cross multiply them. We're going to use our uh, graphing calculator to try to solve this problem and I'll show you how to do this. So here's my TI-84 plus and I'm going to use the normal calculator function uh, and cross multiply these two numbers which will give me a larger number. So it's 12,543. Now that's not a prime number and we can check that by doing the following. Go into your, um, your Y function thingamajig and enter 12,543 
divided by x. Now, what is this function? This function is basically um, a function that will show us all of the factors available in this number. So all of the whole number factors. Now, press enter. And to check this, we're going to go into our table. So that's second table. And so here are all of the values for x and y. So here, what we're looking for is we're looking for a, a whole factors or whole numbers in the y column. So right here, we already see 4,181 uh, is one of the factors, which already means that it's not a prime number. And as you keep going down, you'll find more and more. So somewhere over here, you're going to find another factor, 339. Now, this is, this is just for a three digit number. Now imagine a prime number that has like a million digits and you cross multiply them and you'll get so many, many, many factors. In other words, if you wanted to find uh, the original private keys, if you wanted to hack these, um, these keys and find P1 and P2, it would take you like years and years and years, even on the most powerful computer. And by then, these P1 and P2 keys could be already changed. In other words, using uh, prime numbers in security is absolutely essential. And this security principle is actually called RSA, which is named after three people that discovered this method. And I believe their names were Rivest, Shamir, and Aldman. And these are three people that basically, three mathematicians that decided to play around with prime numbers and discover this awesome method. Now, the fact that we don't actually know of the prime numbers yet, and the fact that you can always discover new prime numbers uh, really within weeks uh, of searching for them, means that, well, for one, it's really secure. So, you know, if, if you use a number that nobody even knows, that means your, your information is pretty secure. And the other thing is that, at the moment, we've only discovered about this many numbers out of a huge, 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 huge amount of uh, available prime numbers. So there's quite a lot of them to discover yet, and that means there's quite a lot of key, possible key combinations and possible encryptions that will probably take us a few dec decades, if not hundreds of years, to discover. Another real life of use of prime numbers is actually from biology, and you can actually ask your biology teacher about this because it's a, I find it's a pretty cool example as well. This specific example deals with creatures known as cicadas. Cicadas to me are absolutely terrifying. They're just as big as you see them on your screen. They're really loud and they're really, really obnoxious because they keep me up at night. Now, you've probably seen them before or you may have heard of them before, but you, what you don't realize is that every year we actually see a slightly different species of cicadas because these creatures li live on a very specific life cycle. Specifically, or at least in the US, uh, cicadas live on a 13 year and 17 year cycles. Now, what does that mean? That means that every 13 years, there's a huge explosion of cicadas everywhere. They just kind of procreate, uh, they create lots and lots of babies, and then they sleep for 13 more years. In between that, you'll have other uh, cicada species, but for 13 years, there's like a huge explosion. And then there's another species that does it every 17 years. Now, both of these numbers are prime. Why is that important? Well, let's look at something else. A lot of animals actually love cicadas. They love eating cicadas, uh, things like birds, snakes, moles, or even, even wasps, they love eating cicadas. For one, cicadas are relatively passive. They don't actually fight back as hard as some other animals. And they're really big. They're, I guess, really meaty, or even though they look disgusting to us. But predators, predators love these things. So cicadas are awesome for them. But a lot of predators, or most predators, have a slightly different uh, life cycle. Their population usually explodes every two years, every three or four years, every six years, and sometimes every seven or eight years. In other words, every, let's just uh, look at number four. Every four years, there's like a huge explosion of, let's just say, snakes. And those snakes get really hungry, they want to eat, but will they get any cicadas to eat? If cicadas had a different life cycle, for example, if their life cycle was only three years, so in other words, every three years there's a huge explosion of cicadas, that means that, uh, let's just look, let's make a little graph right here. So every four years, one, two, three, four, there's a huge explosion of uh, predators. And then one, two, three, four, and not a huge explosion of predators. One, two, three, four, huge explosion of predators. Cicadas do it every three years. So cicadas appear here every three years. One, two, three, every three years. One, two, three, every three years. And one, two, three, every three years. In other words, there will be, after about four cycles, there would actually be time for both cicadas and predators 
uh, appearing in, in huge numbers. And guess what's going to happen? Well, all the predators are going to eat all the cicadas, basically uh, decreasing the chance for their survival, decreasing the gene pool, and essentially making them maybe even disappear. No, well, not disappear, but just decrease a huge, hugely decrease in numbers. And that's not what nature really wants. Nature wants to give cicadas a chance to survive, you know, to procreate. And so for that reason, through evolutionary processes, their life cycle evolved to be 13 and 17 years. Let's look at these two numbers. So 13 and 4, for example. That means that cicadas will have 42 years before they'll even be in, in danger of uh, being eaten by all these predators. Here, however, the number was only 12. So here it's 12 years, every 12 years. And uh, cicadas that have a 17-year cycle will only be in danger every 7 times 4. Is, I think it's every 68 years. In other words, for 68 years, they don't have to worry about being eaten by predators. And by then, they'll actually have a really well-developed gene pool. They'll have lots of chance to procreate several times. And they'll be much stronger as a species. Now, this is not to say that they chose this life cycle. It was through the evolutionary processes that they actually uh, came out to have the, these uh, prime numbers as, as, as uh, life cycles. But it, in reality, it made them a lot more resilient to uh, being eaten, to being destroyed by other species. And so, in other words, for an animal that is relatively passive, it doesn't actually have that many defenses, uh, a prime number life cycle would actually be very, very beneficial to survival. So this is how um, cicadas develop to survive better in our world. And these were two examples of real-life application of prime numbers. Uh, the one uh, with computers is actually a lot more beneficial to us as humans because um, I think as security becomes more complex, prime numbers will become more and more important. So if you do want to become uh, you know, a computer scientist or something, you do have to understand prime numbers really, really well. And if somebody ends up stealing your credit card number one day, well, you can blame the prime numbers on that as well. Because that means someone did not use proper prime numbers. Anyway, thank you for watching What the Math and Prime Numbers and Composite Numbers. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.